Thank you very much uh, to the organizers for the invitation to talk about self-testing and community-based uh, testing. I have no disclosures to make, and this morning I'll talk about, let's say, the public health uses and implications of possibilities to self-test for HIV and STIs and to test in community settings and to see <laughs> to what extent we have evidence of these new modalities living up to their promise of making testing more accessible and contributing to increased re reach and increased um, frequency of testing. I'll cover a couple of areas, starting with community-based uh, testing, which is really sort of testing for HIV and STIs in any setting outside of a, a health uh, facility. Home-based testing, a particularly interesting uh, uh, type of uh, community testing that's taken off quite a bit in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa in particular, is approaching people door to door and is distinguished from self-testing, which sometimes in the Northern Hemisphere is also referred to as home-based testing, but self-testing really involves people uh, taking their own sample uh, doing the processing of the sample themselves and reading and interpreting uh, the results with all challenges that come with that. Self-sampling involves only the sampling part of it and then shipping the specimen to a lab or another facility uh, to get the result uh, returned. So this talk inevitably involves quite a bit of hard uh, choices and to help me in doing that in a sort of a systematic way, I ran the literature several times and uh, that confirmed that we're looking at a very big and rapidly evolving and diverse uh, area of, uh, of research and practice uh, as well with large, now, large numbers of, uh, of studies that cover quite a diversity of topics that I'll try and touch on and do as much justice as one can in about 15 uh, minutes. I'll not talk, about, uh, not talk a lot about the accuracy of tests or the ability of people to test, but spend a bit of time looking at uh, prefer preferences and uptake in particular, uh, looking at some of the recent research into delivery and implementation and important questions around service linkage and referral and the little research uh, on uh, this little research on social harms and benefits, but I'll mention some, some of that. So starting with uh, community-based uh, testing, this is a thriving field and the review of global research has identified quite a range of approaches that have been used to facilitate testing outside of health uh, facility settings. The door-to-door -door testing, I refer to that, but also uh, using of mobile testing services uh, already in use for quite a while, index uh, patient uh, testing in families or through uh, uh, notifications, workplace testing and uh, testing in other types of settings and of course uh, self-testing. And those community-based approaches, and there's also a review of uh, work or meta-analysis of work in sub-Saharan Africa in particular, but that research uh, uh, typically shows that HIV testing and counseling uptake are increased by or can be increased when using community-based approaches. And in particular, it can increase the proportion of first-time testers and people testing at higher levels of CD4 cell count. So people who uh, may have been infected uh, less recently, or, uh, more recently, and who may, have not, who may have been unlikely to test for HIV can be captured by uh, community-based testing approaches. There is an interesting uh, development in the uh, community-based uh, uh, testing uh, field. Uh, that is to use social networks to, distri to, to distribute or to facilitate uh, testing um, for, for HIV, in particular using uh, self-testing uh, self, self kits. Pro project like this is being run in the Netherlands. This is an example from uh, uh, California. Marie, uh, Margarita Lightfo Lightfoot and her colleagues trained peers to distribute a number of HIV self-tests uh, self to their peers and the people were asked to distribute five tests which worked quite well on average and the uh, recipients of the test were asked to complete an online survey and this sort of program uh, confirms uh, that uh, the men who were reached minor minority MSM were more likely to have never tested before and to test HIV positive. So an interesting uh, new development combining community testing and self-testing to uh, reach men at increased risk uh, of HIV. Looking at home-based uh, testing uh, more specifically, 
A number of trials are ongoing in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. These are findings from the first year uh, of the, uh, the, the pop art uh, trial from the communities in, uh, in Zambia that received the, uh, the full intervention, which in addition to the home-based testing included a range of other sort of behavioral and health promotion um, interventions. High acceptability of home-based testing uh, across genders, more than 80% of people consented to participate in the trial, and high uh, percentages of people uh, knowing their HIV status uh, uh, through participation in the trial, over 80% as well. And also quite important, at one year, uh, more than half of the people who had tested positive were, uh, had initiated antiretroviral uh, treatment. So very promising approach uh, as, uh, as one would have hoped uh, for. An important area of research that hasn't, uh, hasn't received much attention uh, to date is, the, is, to, is for some studies to look at the positive social benefits of home-based uh, testing. So there is the idea that home-based testing might, re might uh, contribute to the normalization of HIV testing and the reduction of HIV stigma. There's not that much research, but this uh, meta or re systematic review and meta-analysis uh, collated evidence from five studies studies that looked at uh, uh, stigma-related indicators, and they did indeed find positive effects of home-based testing compared to non-exposure to home-based testing in terms of observing stigmatizing behaviors in the community. Uh, the experience of people uh, testing positive uh, being exposed to stigmatizing behaviors and also a reduction in intimate partner violence in relation to HIV and um, testing. So very promising uh, results in that space as well. So a critical issue with home-based testing that's receiving increasing attention is linkage uh, to care and a, um, a review uh, identified a number of strategies that are being used to strengthen uh, linkage to care after home-based testing. So for instance, provision of funds to, uh, for transportation to the clinic, follow-up counseling, or lay, facil lay, facilitate, uh, lay counselor facilitation of the initial uh, visit to the clinic accompanying the person testing positive, point of care CD4 cell count uh, testing, and home-based sampling for viral load uh, testing and results. Quite a few studies are particularly looking at the, uh, the use, usefulness and the effect of counseling with some promising results uh, from a study of rural communities in Uganda that included uh, counseling at one and two months uh, after testing compared to home-based, uh, compared to standard of care, and a planned trial also in Uganda that, looked, that looks at an enhanced linkage intervention encompassing CD4 cell uh, counts as well as, in, as several occasions of uh, counseling in, uh, in, in rural Uganda as well. Particularly promising uh, results also from a uh, study in Lesotho that looked at uh, offering people um, same-day initiation of ART in relation to home-based counseling and compared to a standard referral that also uh, showed, that showed significant increased uptake of uh, linkage to care and viral suppression at uh, 12 months. So lots of things happening in that space. Self-testing for HIV is certainly also uh, an area where lots, uh, lots of research is going on. Unfortunately, much of that evidence has been synthesized uh, in relation to the uh, WHO uh, guidelines on self-testing. And those reviews show that uh, people are quite capable of uh, uh, ap appropriately performing uh, self-tests and that agreement uh, with professional, uh, professionally uh, performed self-test is quite uh, substantial. That, of course, leaves open the question as to uh, how sensitive and specific the self-tests are compared to lab-based uh, testing, of course. There's also some research that looks at uh, uptake and frequency of testing. Randomized controlled trials uh, in men show double, uh, double, double rates of uptake of testing and also an a substantial increase of the frequency uh, in, uh, in, of HIV testing when using uh, self-testing procedures. So uh, lots of, lots, lots is go lots is, a lot is going on, and I want to draw your attention to a um, 
systematic mapping protocol from our colleagues at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine that looks at sort of ensuring a, a robust process to update the evidence and to share that online through a, a knowledge hub, HIVST. Dot org. So check that out. It's quite an interesting site. I also want to draw your attention to a recent, uh, e recent review that doesn't look so much at the evidence around HIV self-testing, but that looks at the arguments that are being used for and against uh, HIV testing. And it's an interesting sort of insight in the evolving arguments uh, that are being used and that circulate in different, uh, in different uh, settings. Looking at self-testing again, there's also in increasing interest in HIV self-testing in sub-Saharan Africa with uh, studies finding variable uh, acceptability across uh, studies. Particularly interesting area is the use of HIV self-testing to promote uh, partner testing and couple testing uh, uh, where the female partner is, um, is pregnant, in particular looking at male partners. And so the pregnant partner distributing a self-test to the male partner can increase partner testing as well as uh, couple, uh, couples testing uh, with some uh, interesting findings from Kenya and a study planned in uh, Malawi looking at different uh, sort of accompanying interventions to promote uh, partner self-testing with a critical role for self-test uh, but also for financial in incentives and for reminders. The distribution of self-tests more generally is a critical uh, issue currently with studies in sex workers looking at the effectiveness or the efficiency of uh, peer uh, distribution versus peer distribution of self-testing, uh, self-tests uh, self directly or the distribution of vouchers to collect um, uh, test self-tests at a facility and both increase testing relative to standard of care with in particular the direct distribution being a very effective increase in increasing testing rates. Electronic vending machines uh, have been explored in uh, California and there's a lot of attention for digital technology in the sense of interventions, let's say more, more behavioral prevention interventions that include an option to uh, access self-testing, platforms dedicated to obtaining self-testing, and importantly as well, online approaches to support people in accurately performing self-tests. Going into the, uh, my last topic, uh, self-sampling for STIs, I'll be very short. Uh, in that space, there's a lot of attention for online, uh, making, making self-sampling available online. This is an, this is an example from, uh, from France, but initiatives like this are happening in other parts of the world as well, including uh, in the Netherlands. And making, uh, on, making self-sampling available online seems particularly promising, and I think one of the challenges there is to, to motivate people to actually access that online uh, resource. And lastly, an, an important issue uh, that's emerging in the literature is around uh, self-sampling for HPV in the key populations with research showing that uh, women living with HIV have inadequate knowledge on, uh, on HPV and cervical cancer prevention, but also a randomized trial showing that self-sampling and results counseling did not increase uh, testing. Looking more broadly at uh, anal, cancer, anal cancer in people living with HIV, a systematic review showed that men who have sex with men have limited knowledge on the risk of H HIV and HPV co-infection, but an evaluation sh study showed that there's high accept uh, acceptability and feasibility of anal self-swabbing uh, amongst HIV, people living with HIV in France and in Marseille. And some interesting work uh, out of Fenway Health looking at uh, transmasculine uh, individuals who have a clear uh, preference for uh, swabbing or for pap tests and uh, an evaluation uh, study showing that uh, uh, pref that transmasculine individuals uh, have a clear preference over self-swabbing over provider, provider swabbing and that testing has uh, similar specificity between self-swabbing and provider uh, swabbing but perhaps uh, somewhat lower uh, sensitivity. So in conclusion, there's a substantial body of research around the performance of testing and the preference of testing. Many questions, of course, still remain. And supportive evidence around the uptake of 
various testing modalities. I think it's, there's, there's, a, there's a sort of a change of research questions to starting to focus on how can we most appropriately deliver self-testing and self-sampling and home-based uh, testing and community-based testing and modalities with an interest in particular in online and secondary distribution uh, mechanisms. Lots of attention or increasing attention being devoted to linkage uh, to care. Not a lot of information on linkage to confirmation testing, which may be inherent in the types of studies that are out there where that is taken care of, and hardly anything about linkage to prevention for people testing HIV negative. So important and perhaps somewhat controversial uh, issues. Critical research questions uh, include the variability in adoption, where, for instance, in the uh, Popart trial, some work is being done to um, understand uh, contextual and other factors uh, influencing uptake. Impact and cost effectiveness of different uh, testing modalities remain important uh, issues. And I think in addition to the few studies, it would be worthwhile to look further into the beneficial effects of self-testing and home-based testing and other forms of community testing in normalizing HIV testing, looking at stigma as an indicator. But there is also some, but not a lot of attention to uh, uh, possible harms in terms of coercion, rejection, and violence. And this is a bit of an area where um, uh, there's more of an absence of evidence rather than uh, evidence of absence of any effects. Thank you very much.